If you are stuck in a rut with your meal prepping, or you see a lot of really impressive pictures or methods on Instagram and you want to do it, but you're just not quite sure where to begin, I have a treat for you today. Today I'm talking with Stephanie Hillberry of Fit Devo, and she is giving us all of her secrets, and I know you're going to want to hear them. Stick around. Hey there, I'm Amy Connell, and welcome to the Graced Health Podcast. This podcast is for women who want simple and grace-filled ways to take care of themselves and age their bodies well. And of course, we enjoy a little chocolate in the process. If you listened to last week's episode, you know why I always say that. So make sure you go back and listen to it if you have not yet. I'm so glad you've joined me today. I have to admit, whenever I see a new podcast or a new episode come through on my feed, I look at that and even really without even thinking about it, my thought is this, what's in it for me? Sometimes I'm looking to learn something. Sometimes I'm looking to feel something. Uh, Sometimes I'm looking to understand something, but I'm always trying to figure out exactly what's in it for me. And again, I don't know that it's necessarily a conscious thing. And sometimes I just want to laugh, by the way. That's why I always try and provide you with applicable information. And sometimes it might be a little different. Sometimes it might be to learn something or understand it. But I always want to just be able to put some things in your pocket so you can find your own simple, graced, filled health. That's kind of all what it ties down to. That's why I'm so excited to introduce you to Stephanie Hillberry. If you do not know her, if you don't know her, you're going to want to start following her and seeing all of her beautiful creations. And by creations, I mean food, (laughs) because she's got some great stuff out there. Stephanie is a clean beauty consultant. She's a writer, marketing manager, 5 a.m. fitness enthusiast. I prefer 6 a.m. I get up at 5.15, but that's okay. She's a daily habit hacker and a meal prep master. And I cannot overemphasize that last one. She's a meal prep master. She spreads her love for discipline through her daily routines, recipes, and spiritual rituals at fitdevo.com and also on Instagram at at fitdevo. Stephanie has really mastered two things. One is smoothies, which we don't talk a lot about, but if you go to her website and check it out, you'll see just kind of her formula for creating a well-balanced smoothie. Because if you just put a whole bunch of fruit in a blender, you're not going to have that as balanced as you want it to. She also has created this simple little formula for bowls. So she basically will create an entire week's worth of meals and prep it all on a weekend. And she said she can get this into an hour or less, which is really impressive. I am not there, but she is. And so if you're looking to put a little bit of effort in and what time and then have meals throughout the week, this is the episode for you. Now, I got to tell you, for me and my family, this works really well for my husband and I. And I have, since I interviewed her, I've been implementing this a little bit. And then we, I still make regular dinners for my family. So I think that this is a great one for you to listen to and think, how can I apply this to myself and what is sustainable for me? It might be that this is a great way for you to do lunches and dinners for your whole family. It might be that it's great for one of you or a handful of you or just particular meals. So kind of think about that in your head is how can I make this work for me? Because I think she has some really great ways of, again, sustainability, balance, and of course, nutritious whole food meals. So I will not keep you any longer. And I'm going to bring on Stephanie Hillberry. Stephanie, thank you so much for your time. I'm so glad that you have been able to just pop onto the show and give us a little um, guidance and advice, I guess, um, on mat on, excuse me, on batch and meal prepping. Now tell me what, do you like to call it meal prepping or batch prepping or, cause there's a lot of different terms out there. So what, sure. what do you like to use? How do you, I think do you I call, call I think I call it meal prep. I, once upon a time, I think I used batch, but I just meal prep, I think is how I think of it. 
Okay. And so you define that by like meal prepping a whole bunch of stuff at one time and then utilizing it at different times. Yes. Got it. Got it. Hey, can you, I've introduced you a little bit in the, um, before we jumped on, but can you tell people just a little bit about yourself, um, where you live, what you do, what you like to do to move and all of that kind of fun stuff. So I live in Colorado. I'm a Colorado native. Um, it is a very active place. So we Colorado and spend a lot of time outside all year long. Um, I think growing up here maybe gave me a affinity for health and wellness and fitness. So I move through lots of different ways. Um, I like to hike. I enjoy running, not usually in the middle of winter, but during other nicer times of year. Um, And I am a huge fan of weightlifting. I really enjoy that. So I have a very ghetto home gym that I use every day to do some kind of resistance training. Um, And then I attempt to encourage myself to stretch, which I made out of cardboard apparently. So this is the most difficult aspect of moving. Um, But I also, as we will talk about quite a bit and in just a bit, I really love to cook healthy food, but I'm not much of a cook. I'm really more of a meal prepper. So I, have over the last, I would say year and a half, kind of developed a system that works really well for my husband and I. And it it came from lots of uh, trial and error, I guess is what I would say, just practicing in the kitchen. And now I spend a little time every weekend making a week's worth of food. And it helps keep me from eating, for instance, the giant tub of cookies currently sitting in my office around the corner from me. So if you, if any of you work, you know, nine to five kind of traditional jobs in offices, you know what I am talking about. There are always snacks everywhere. So it helps me, helps me eat healthy and not exclusively consume home baked snacks brought in by my very generous coworkers. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> one of the, when I used to work in an office, one of the guys had Andy's candies in his, like in a candy jar. And oh my gosh, those things are so addictive. And I loved them. And it took all I had not to eat too many of them. I definitely ate them. And it seems like there's always someone's like birthday. Oh yeah. Bringing things in. And so I, I, you know, I think that there's been some, some pretty funny, um, like comedic episodes made out of that, of just the constant the constant stream of birthday cakes and all of that stuff, which, you know, it's nice to acknowledge stuff, but yeah, it can get a little bit too much. Well, I tell you what, since you brought it up and that's why we're on here, let's, let's lean in. Let's just dig into that a little bit because this is you and I met just over Instagram and I've been watching your feed and a couple things. First of all, you have a gorgeous feed. I mean, oh, you, like you, you do all of the things that the, all of the experts say to do that. I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's just, <laughs> <laughs> like, if, I, I have a little bit of a quirky thing about, it's kind of like decorating. I think there's something about, uh, your Instagram feed for me that feels a little bit like, uh, interior design or something. So, um, I do it, it mostly for my own enjoyment because it, I just like to see how it all looks together. So well, you um, I wish I could say job. it's a real marketing savvy, but really I just think it, I like it to look pretty. So I spend time working on that. <laughs> well, that explains it because I have zero desire to do decorating. Like I don't do it unless I absolutely have to. <laughs> so that, that's probably the basis of the difference of our feeds. Cause mine's like, I throw it up there. And of course that's part of my thing. Like I used to have on mine. Um, I'm not perfectly curated and the, neither is this feed. Cause I'm like, I just, I, that's just not, I'm that I can't, I'm not, I'm not that way. Um, do you have pr- photography, like a background in that? Because your pictures are gorgeous as well. I, I don't have a background in it. I will say that it was around 2008 when I started in the world of kind of blogging. And um, I learned slowly through the years. And I, I mainly learned by looking to see what other people were doing. Um, and I could just kind of picked it up. So I'm, I'm pretty self-taught. I am by no means a legitimate photographer. Um, but it, as far as a social media f- photo creator, I think that I've just kind of learned along, along the road, how people are doing things. So I'm a yeah. copier. 
Hey, <laughs> you know, you learn. That's how you learn. And well, I have to say, they are good enough to make me salivate whenever you post food pictures. So that's <laughs> they really oh, they are you. they are fantastic. And one of the things that I love about them is you show how simple it is. And I think simplicity is something that I know I'm always looking for. And a lot of my listeners are looking for, I mean, I even say at the beginning of this podcast, it's for women who want simple and grace-filled ways to take care of themselves. Uh, They just look like that perfect combination of healthy and simple and easy. So can you just kind of talk us through like what a what does a typical meal prep look to you look like for you? Do you do sure. several meals? Do you just do your main meals? And I would just love for you to just spill it, sister. Just tell us everything sure. so we can okay. we can kind of model it. Okay. So here is what I do. Usually toward the end of the week, we grocery shop. And by we, I mean, I'm fortunate. My husband actually lately has been going to the store. So between the two of us, we come up with a grocery list. Um, and we know, just like probably a lot of you know, we know what our staples are, foods that we go to again and again. Um, and so making our list isn't very challenging. We just always kind of think, well, we haven't had, for instance, butternut squash in a couple of weeks. So let's grab one of those. So we put together a list, uh, he shops, and then on Saturday or Sunday, we spend a little bit of time, and I have gotten this down to some some weekends are even an hour or less, um, a little bit of time prepping. And what I do is I chop up and cook a lot of the veggies that we eat during the week. So we always have, we always have salad options. So I think right now in my fridge, I've got kale, I have some arugula, I have some spinach, um, I've got some shaved Brussels sprouts. Uh, I, I like those pre-mixed salad mixes that you can buy at the store. Um, green is usually the base of most of the meals that I eat during the week. So I always have kind of a variety of those. And then I will cook up some vegetables. Like I said, I'll roast butternut squash, or maybe I'll roast a spaghetti squash. I will um, cut up some tomatoes. Um, my husband is a huge fan of stir fry stuff. So he will cut up a bunch of zucchini, broccoli, mushrooms, and he'll saute them in a big container. Um, so we really do prep a lot of our veggies in the summertime. We'll grill a lot of veggies on the grill, like just a whole bag of those little mini peppers we'll throw on the grill. Um, and then I cut them up and I save them in the fridge, usually in, you know, um, glass containers, Pyrex containers. And in addition to veggie prep, we also prep one to three protein options. Um, So that for me this week, that looks like um, roasting a couple salmon fillets. And I had some turkey meatballs that I defrosted. I'd made a, a batch a couple weeks ago and I froze some of them. And so I pulled some of the frozen ones out of the freezer, defrosted those. Um, so from there, I usually, those are kind of my main building blocks. Occasionally we'll also cook up some kind of starch carb that we really like. Like this week it was orzo pasta. So we made a batch about a cup's worth of orzo pasta, um, which when you cook it, you know, it ends up being about double that. And that created basically our building blocks. So one of the things that I have learned over the last couple of years is I don't create, I don't cook meals. I cook and prep components of meals that then I assemble in usually a bowl in the evening, or I'll put it into a to-go container for my lunch at work. Um, so these are essentially the building blocks that we use to build our meals during the course of the week. And my, I have actually a little bit of a formula that I tend to use. Um, it's not, it's not fancy math. This is just kind of a ratio that I find really works well for me. Um, so it's usually about half of the serving is green. Like I mentioned, kale, spinach, arugula, something green. About a quarter of it is some other kind of vegetable. Um, and this can be a starchy vegetable or not a starchy vegetable. I'm not picky. I don't have, um, rules about that. So just whatever kind of veggie I'm in the mood for. Um, And then I will add usually some variety of toppers. And then I also will add about a fourth of protein to that. So like, for instance, I'll share with you 
Well, Amy, I'll give you a chance to interrupt me in case you want to pop in here. No, that's, this is all. Yeah, I actually, I will ask one question that in when you roast or grill your vegetables, do you season mm-hmm. them with anything or do you just use like a salt and pepper? So that way it, it can go any which way you want it to. How does that work? It usually I do like to keep them fairly unseasoned for the reason that you kind of alluded to, which is that I like them to be versatile. So when I roast stuff, I might use a little bit of um, that coconut oil spray or a little bit of olive oil. Um, most of the time, I usually just stick to salt and pepper with things. Occasionally, there are certain spices that we reliably like. So chipotle is one of them. Um, we like to smoke pepper paprika a lot. So if I know that that will complement some of the other things I have in mind for the week, I might throw in a spice, but I will tell you it is way easier to cook something and keep it more generic and then add seasoning to it during the week, depending on what you're in the mood for, than it is to commit your your prep to a certain kind of spice profile right out of the gate. And then you're kind of stuck like, oh, these meatballs would be really great with my butternut squash, but I cooked them in, you know, something chili pepper. And that seems like a weird combo. (laughs) (laughs) That doesn't sound good to me. So it's a little easier to add it after the fact. (laughs) That makes total sense. Yeah. And for me, it it has definitely been a learning experience of which flavors complement the other. And I have, um, I, I have been guilty in the past of like, okay, well, I'm going to use this seasoning on my fish and potatoes and Brussels sprouts. Mm. And then all of a sudden it's like way too much. And I think I, Mm. one time when I used a spice that was really spicy and I don't do spice very well. So um, I was like, okay, overdone and noted. (laughs) So yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. That's definitely um, something that I have learned. Okay. So I, that was actually all the questions I had. I'm over here furiously taking notes, by the way, I'm loving this. Um, So I will let you, I will let you go on from there. Okay. So I'll give you um, some examples. For instance, this week, um, here's some of the things that we kind of have combinations that I've already prepped based on what we bought at the grocery store. Um, So like I said, I prepped some turkey meatballs and some salmon, and I made two different types of lunches for myself this week. One of them is a, um, a base of coleslaw mix. I really like the shredded cabbage kind of pre-mixed coleslaw um, without all the sauces and stuff. And I have that as a base with some tomatoes and some of that salmon. And then I also put rosemary in there and I made a dressing with sour cream mixed with chipotle and kind of mixed it all together, which I know it sounds a little bit like a strange combination, but I have eaten this before and I promise that it's good. At least I like it. Um, so that's yeah, the one of the- and Chipotle. I never would have put that together. They are a surprisingly good combination. Um, oh, and I forgot I sprinkled a teensy bit because a little goes a long way, a teensy bit of blue cheese on that. Um, so that's one of the meals. And then and this, the second, okay. Oh, sorry, can I ask one more question? So yeah. when you do salmon, I mean, if you prep that on a Saturday, that- does that, doesn't, it doesn't go bad for the next week? Well, salmon usually doesn't last that long in our house. Um, But I would say we, I prep food. Most of our proteins will last in the fridge for five days, five to six days. We're really good about if, if we don't eat it, um, we don't, and it starts to get fishy, like, fishy as in creepy, then we will usually end up putting it down the garbage disposal. But we have done a really good job of of decreasing our food waste a ton with this method, actually. Um, So I think you kind of learn the pace that your family eats things and that you eat things. Um, And so we know approximately, like I I made four salmon fillets, and I know that between my husband and I, um, we will eat those before the, before the end of the week, before they kind of start to get a little beyond, um, yeah, just where you're feeling that like, Ooh, so if you find that you start getting creeped out in your mind, because I think this is a real thing. If you start getting creeped out in your mind about something like, Ooh, this chicken's been in there for several days and I'm starting to feel creepy about it. 
to me, it's not worth making enough where you get to the creep level. So I would prep less during the weekend if you know that I'm going to reach a certain point with this and I just even mentally, I'm not going to be able to eat it because it creeps me out too much. I think people have um, a different line of where they get creeped out and where they don't get creeped out. Um, So observe your own line of how long food can stay in your fridge. Um, But for sure, in a refrigerator at the the rate that my husband and I tend to eat our bulk protein, um, I can usually, when I prep a couple different options, it'll usually get us through the week without any problems. And where we're eating it all, there's no waste, but it's also not going bad. Okay. And then do you, when you, like this coleslaw combo that you're talking mm-hmm. about, is that something that you will put three or four together at a time, or do you put it together the night before? I like to put them together all at once. Um, you could totally do the night before. I'm very lazy. So I know I'm way more successful if I just do it all at once. Um, so this is a tip that I've learned along the way because I, I have encountered this question, which is, well, how do, you, how do you prep stuff all at once and have it not get kind of soggy or especially when you're using dressings and stuff? Um, so there's a couple things that I do that I think help this problem of pre-making things and then having them sit for a few days before you actually eat them. One is that I tend to use veggies that are a little heartier. So I never use spring mix. I never use iceberg or romaine lettuce. I stick to kale and cab. I mean, cabbage, you can douse cabbage in vinegar for several days and it's not going to, it might get a little sauerkrauty on you, but it's certainly not going to get slimy on you. It's way too hearty for that. So I tend to pick veggies that can stand up to a little bit of time without getting wilty. Um, And I also, I also selectively pick which dressings I'm going to use. So for instance, the, the cabbage lunch that I'm having. The dressing I put together for that is sour cream with chipotle. And I put a little bit of vinegar in there, but it's not, um, it's a pretty creamy dressing. It's not very thin, if that makes sense. Um, So it's not spread out among everything. It's kind of, uh, I'll mix it all together when I'm ready to eat it. But in its container, the dressing is kind of in a little bit of a pocket sort of in the center of my dish waiting for it to get mixed into everything. So dressings that aren't really vinaigrettes, for instance, I might wait until the night before to dress my salad with vinaigrette or even the morning of, especially if I'm using something like spinach or arugula. I think they, when you mix spinach and arugula with vinaigrette and you leave it for longer than 24 hours, you might start running into a little bit of wilt Mm-hmm. So for those more tender greens, um, if I do want to eat them with vinaigrette, I wait and I dress them closer to when I'm going to eat them. So you just kind of have to measure how, how tender is my veggie that I've got here and how uh, acidic and liquidy is my, my dressing. Got it. So. Okay. All right. Those two Thank things you. really help. <laughs> Thanks for letting me interrupt with that. Okay. So I oh, think I welcome. stopped you after your first combo and then you were going to tell me about the second one that you had. So the me. second one is more of a, an Asian type of dish. I have chopped cauliflower and broccoli with shaved Brussels sprouts mixed together with the turkey meatballs that I defrosted, um, a little, uh, scoop of peanuts and then a spicy peanut vinaigrette that I get from Trader Joe's. So that one is a little bit more Asian. Oh, I think we also have some chopped green onions on that. So again, that's a good, those veggies, cauliflower, broccoli. If you've ever made like a veggie salad in the summertime with vinegar that's got cauliflower and broccoli in it, you know that they can, they're almost even better when you kind of do let them sit there a little bit after a few days. So the peanut dressing does have a little bit of vinegar in it. It definitely will make it better actually as it sits for a few days with those particular veggies. Mm, That sounds delicious. That sounds so, so good. (laughs) And it takes about, I think it spent maybe five minutes putting together the whole thing. So super easy. Because you just buy the the riced cauliflower and the the chopped broccoli or... 
Um, I sometimes I'll do, it depends on, it depends on how motivated I am. I love the idea of keeping your kitchen waste to a minimal. If you, um, if you have the time for it and you enjoy that little bit of extra prep and it's way more cost effective to buy like a head of cauliflower and a head of broccoli. In this particular instance, I totally bought pre pre chopped cauliflower and broccoli and pre shaved Brussels sprouts and okay. just tossed them all together. So it didn't take me any time at all. Um, so mm, even the long way isn't too time consuming, um, which I will do sometimes. So, it, but if sure. you are in a hurry, the stores are so, have so many pre-chopped convenient items that throwing together veggies and salads is easier than it's ever been. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. And sometimes I buy my own stuff and sometimes I cook it. It just kind of depends, like you said, mm-hmm. depends on what, how much time I have and, and mm-hmm. um, all of that kind of fun stuff. So for that dish, for instance, I'm going to eat it. Um, I put everything in raw and then I put the dressing on. I'll probably heat it just a little bit to eat it before lunch, but that whole entire combination easily you could throw onto a cookie sheet and put in the oven and roast those veggies for a few minutes, you could throw them into a skillet with a little bit of olive or coconut oil and saute them up and eat it. Um, it's easier for me. Obviously, I, I work in an office. I have access to a microwave and that's it. So I tend to not do a lot of, I don't have the benefit of being able to roast something right before I eat it or put it into a pan, but the dish would probably be even better if I had the opportunity to do one of those two things. And your office mates don't complain about who who heated up the cauliflower oh, and the broccoli. They totally do. I am <laughs> I'm always apologizing for my stinky food. <laughs> Sometimes I quarantine myself far away from them. I mean, I, I have some real offensive options this week. I've got cauliflower. I've got broccoli. I have fish. I mean, I am. <laughs> you I am are not. not the favorite right I now. am not. <laughs> Dear coworkers, I apologize. <laughs> I do like a sheet pan meal sometimes with um, Brussels sprouts and butternut squash and mushrooms. And then um, I, I chop up or have like small things of just like a natural uncured sausage. And my husband took one the next day because it like that's a meal in itself. Uh-huh. Uh, my husband took it the next day. He goes, I can never do that to my office. Oh, myself. yeah. And he was like, they were so they're like, smell? everything smells. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm curious, what is your uh, and maybe you don't have these because you're so well planned and well fueled throughout the day. But do you have any just like, go to snacks that you love or that are that just work really well for you and that are easy and simple to prepare? Um, I, I love bean and cheese burritos. I mean, those are, it's a complete protein. Um, it's low fat, it, a little bit of hot sauce. Um, so that's a really good one. I'm a big fan of peanut butter toast. I like, um, veggies with some kind of nut butter, like almond butter or peanut butter, I'm trying to think of what else. I enjoy doing occasionally, especially if I'm struggling with a sweet tooth, I like sweet potatoes as kind of a snack sprinkled with cinnamon. Um, So I think those are probably some of my biggest go-to. You can see I tend to favor things that have a little bit of fat in them. Um, Mm -hmm. That's just my personal preference. I sometimes I, I think that as people, we kind of tend to gravitate a little bit more toward, I have a preference for fat or I have a preference for carbs. For me, it's a little bit more fat. So my snack options usually are a combination of some kind of whole grain with a, um, some kind of fat or veggie or fruit with nuts or something. I'm the same way. I like to say I really gravitate toward plant-based fats. So Mm -hmm. like the nuts and nut butters and avocados and, um, Though I do like eggs. I know you and I have had this conversation online. You don't do well with eggs, but boy. I I don't digest eggs very well, but I do. They are such a great, I'm envious of being able to eat eggs on a regular basis. So they're very good, um, super awesome food. They're just kind of the complete package. Yeah, they really are. They really are. I love that. Well, I do want to be uh, mindful of your time. I was wondering if you could give everybody just a real quick 
synopsis of your health story, because I think it's really easy sometimes when we hear, um, hear you being so successful and you're doing everything so well, you think, well, it's easy. She's always done that, or that's just how it is. And so I think it would be really powerful for people to hear where you've come from and your own little health, health journey. I think that I have been a few things that I have always had going for me is um, my mom was pretty health conscious. She wasn't, I mean, we still ate sugary cereal and had cookies after dinner, um, but she had a value of having well-rounded meals. And so I grew up with that ethos in my house, me and my siblings, even when we're not eating healthy, we've always had kind of an understanding of the baseline to compare what we're eating to. So I think that made a big difference. I would say if you are wherever you are in your life, if you can kind of learn some of the basics of just well-rounded eating, that goes a long, long way. Um, But I for sure have not been as nearly as healthy of an eater as I am now. I particularly when I was a teenager, when I was in my twenties, I ate a lot of convenient kind of snack foods. Like I I remember when I was first starting out in, you know, kind of my first real, real job where I was going to work and I was on salary and I was packing my lunches and I had on any given day, I would have um, a prepackaged granola bar. I would maybe have a pop tart for breakfast. I would have maybe a Yoplait yogurt with my lunch um, and a bag of chips and maybe a salad. So I, well, I said salad, scratch that. I meant sandwich. I hardly ever ate salads back then. I was convinced that I didn't like them. Um, so the fact that I eat green as a base for pretty much every meal is hilarious to me because I would have never thought that this would be me. (laughs) So I was for sure, um, somebody who knew that I should be eating better, but wasn't really eating great. Um, And I would have various attempts, I think a lot of us can relate to this, various sort of spurts of energy where I was like, okay, I'm gonna gonna reform. I'm going to, you know, get on track, eat healthier. And I would try to do the things, all the things, right? I would try to eat more salad and I would try to do a better job and I would burn out really quickly um, and then sort of default to what was easy and convenient for me. And I think that what happened for me was I started to experience some symptoms that I had never had before in my life. Um, So in my 30s, I started having a lot more problems with acid reflux, and it got to the point where I was taking medicine for it all the time, and it got really frustrating. And I went to doctors. You know, and they kind of, they they did some tests just to rule out anything serious. And they didn't really have any explanations for me for why I was struggling with reflux so much. And they just kind of said, well, take Prilosec, you know, buy it over the counter and just take it every day. And they didn't seem too concerned that I was, you know, a young person taking medicine every day. And that bothered me. Um, So I started tinkering a little bit more with my diet. And I started learning a little bit more about inflammation um, and foods that can be inflammatory. I'm not exactly sure why. I I can't remember how I got there, but I basically came to the conclusion that maybe my reflex was caused by some inflammation happening. And so I tried Whole30. Um, probably that was maybe five or six years ago, um, because I was just curious if I eliminate all these foods that are potentially inflammatory, what, what would happen with my reflux? And sure enough, about, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 days into Whole30, my reflux went away. And that was a really big confirmation to me that I was kind of on the right track as to what I was struggling with and the source of what I was struggling with. Um, and I was, simultaneously really surprised by how I didn't miss certain things in my diet. Um, I didn't miss the sugar. You know, after cutting that out, I I didn't really crave it as much as I thought that I would. I didn't miss dairy. Um, It it just wasn't as hard for me as I thought it would be. Um, And I slowly integrated everything back into my diet. There was not one, there wasn't like a really big offensive item. Like I, I didn't 
discover that I was sensitive to gluten. I didn't discover that I had a, a lactose intolerance. There wasn't one particular thing that really caused me problems. I think it was just overall, cumulatively, they were contributing to inflammation that was leading to heartburn. Um, and once I had a chance to kind of calm my system down, um, I think that I made great strides, healing a little bit of that response. And I learned a valuable lesson about the value of whole foods, the value of keeping your diet um, a little bit more squarely in the veggie camp. Um, I'm not a whole 30 participant. Uh, you know, as a rule, I don't, I don't follow any particular, I'm not paleo, I'm not vegan, I'm not fill in the blank of whatever mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know, people are doing. Um, but I do, I do eat predominantly veggie and whole grain based foods. I do use protein kind of as a side versus the other way around. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do that because it helps my inflammation, which in turn keeps me from having to take acid reflux pills all the time. So that's kind of my journey. Once I started doing it a little bit more and realized I felt better, which I think this happens for a lot of us, right? We feel crummy. We change our diet. We start feeling better. And then it's motivating. You're like, oh, I feel better. I like that this food makes me feel better. And then after a while, you kind of really start liking the food more. Um, and that was my, my journey. I discovered that I really liked veggies. Um, I really enjoy them. I like the way they make me feel. Um, I don't force myself to eat them. It's something that I do because I find a lot of benefit from it and it doesn't feel hard. It feels natural. Um, and that I would say that process happened over the course of probably four to five years worth of time. So not overnight by any stretch. And I still definitely eat lots of, you know, I had microwave popcorn over the weekend. I just ate a chocolate chip cookie that someone brought to work earlier this morning. So I'm not a poster child for clean eating or anything like that. Um, but I do eat mostly, and I think this is an important point. Lots of people say this, what you do most of the time is really what you do. Most of the time I eat healthy food that I prep on the weekend, which is key. I don't think I'd do that otherwise. Um, and the other stuff that I have is the small percentage of my week. And overall, it helps me stay healthy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think that there's something so powerful. And actually, two, uh, two things of what you just said. One is finding what works for you. I mean, I think that I was told, actually, I looked it up. There are over a hundred different eating theories out there and I oh, think yeah. because there's no one right way for everyone. And so there's got to be a lot of, a lot of power and just a sense of knowing that you're doing what's best for your individually God created body um, and tinkering around with it and figuring it out. You know, there's no, we don't get a, a manual just on, on what we should eat for ourselves. So, um, I think that that's really great. And the two, I have noticed the same thing with the vegetables. I have a tendency to really lean into sweet potatoes primarily because I know they help me sleep well at night and I know they help me perform well when I'm exercising. And that's, I don't know how I kind of figured that out, but it was like you said, just kind of figure it out along the way. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I mean, I like sweet potatoes. I really do, but I think I like them more because I know that I can really get some good Z's with them. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we do. We start to kind of develop a relationship with these foods that we know treat our body so well in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So, and then the other thing I want to go back to one of the things that you said just at the very beginning of that, that's really encouraging to me is you watching your, your mom be helpful mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of having that in the space that you grow up in. I know, um, you know, I've got us, I've got two boys who are 14 and 16 and, when you talk about not being the poster child for clean eating, <laughs> <laughs> they fall into that category and they do relatively well. I don't mean to throw them under the bus, but you know, they're kids and they're boys oh, yeah. they get away with that kind of stuff. And so totally. hearing someone coming out on the other end and, and my parents were, um, I will, I got to give a lot of parents to my, or a lot of credit to my parents. I mean, they were health conscious. They did. Um, it was a little different, you know, growing up in the, early nineties, it was all fat free and all of that kind of stuff. But sure. at least there was an awareness of, sure. um, of trying to find the right foods for your body. And so, um, it's encouraging to me to hear other stories of people who 
ate pop tarts for breakfast in their twenties, and now they are, oh. you know, <laughs> eating eating half of their meals have um, a green with them every time. So I think that that um, that's just gives a lot of encouragement to me and hopefully to um, my listeners as well. Well, and I would love to add one quick note, which is I know some of you listening may have loved ones in your family that you want um, health for, and maybe they're not making the greatest eating decisions and you'd love to influence them. I just want to encourage you. My husband and I were talking over the weekend as he's meal prepping with me. um, He started eating a little bit more like me about a year ago. In fact, I looked up in my photo gallery, the first picture I took of kind of, he made his own sort of healthy bowl. Um, and it was, it was a little under a year ago. And he has gradually over time, just by watching me eat the way that I eat, he's slowly started to adopt more and more of that type of, of eating. And in part, because we're in the same house and it's a little bit more convenient, but um, he was remarking over the weekend about how far he's come and how encouraged he's been by that process. And he was saying that he was thankful for my example, because it's kind of helped him. So I know that sometimes it's a hard conversation to have sometimes with your loved ones, like, Hey, you don't want to feel like a nag, which certainly doesn't work, but your example, even if you're not saying anything, what you're doing definitely rubs off. And maybe it doesn't happen within the course of a year. Um, like I said, my journey has been five years long and it's really only been within the last year that my husband's kind of started coming along, sort of doing the same thing as me. Um, so just hang in there. I think that we really um, encourage people a lot more by what we're doing than we realize. And it does make a difference. So you're so right in that. And I've witnessed that um, a little bit in my own house. And thank you for that, because I think it's something that we forget. And sometimes we forget that people are not on the same timeline that we are in their, whatever their health journey is. So um, that's a good thing to remember to just keep modeling, keep doing, don't necessarily nag. <laughs> I'm sure you Yeah, definitely. Do which is the hard part, right? You kind of want to like, are you going to eat that? Like, wow, you're having seconds of that, huh? Like those kind of comments are so tempting. And I have, I, you know, I should say have been there. I am there still sometimes. Um, But what has influenced him more is just watching me make these decisions every day, you know, over and over and over and over again, until he finally has kind of started realizing like, hey, I feel tons better. This really does help. This makes a big difference for me. So, yes, yeah, it's been it's been encouraging. So if that's you, then hang in there. And, um, I think, I think your influence makes a difference, even if it doesn't seem like it. That's a great point. And that's a great one to end with. Um, Stephanie, how can people get a hold of you by the, first of all, before we do this, so I'm going to do a little spoiler alert. You can find Stephanie on Instagram at, at fit Devo. And I have to tell you, I introduced, I just sent your, um, your page along to a girlfriend of mine. This was a while ago. And I was like, Hey, this, you're going to really dig what she has. And so she, uh, she follows you and, and now you are like a, like a brand to us. She's like, well, I did, but it's not fit Devo. <laughs> like, fit Devo would do it. So, much <laughs> so your name to us in our conversation is fit Devo. <laughs> So yes, Fit Devo is a good place. Um, I have uh, scaled back the amount of content that I've been posting just most recently, kind of over the holidays. I took a little uh, break from Instagram and I've kind of still been a bit on a hiatus, but go to Instagram at Fit Devo and you can scroll through my feed. There's a lot of these more examples of the kinds of meals that I've prepped. Um, And I talk a lot more about kind of, here's what's on my menu this week. Here are combinations that I'm putting together. Here's things I've learned about meal prep. Um, So there's a good, I would say, year's worth of different ideas in the feed that you can go through. Um, That's a great place to start. You can also find me, um, there's a link in my Instagram profile, but you can find me at fitdevo.com as well. Um, and that is my website. I have a, a few pages that I'll just highlight. If you, you'll see them linked on the homepage. Um, there's a smoothie recipe that I use pretty much every single week. 
it's a formula, just like I was talking about with the bowls. And then there's also an extended post where I talk a little bit more about this formula I use to make my lunches and my dinners. And I kind of break it down. Here's the categories of food. Here's how I put things together. Here's how I kind of create my grocery shopping list. So if you go to fitdevo.com, you'll find both of those posts there. Um, and I would say that's a great place to start. Sounds great. Thank you so much. And then yeah. I, you, you haven't said anything, but you also are a rep for Beauty Counter. That's true. Yes. So in addition to um, healthy food and exercise, uh, a couple of years ago, I started looking a little bit more into net, more natural products and reducing kind of the toxic ingredients I was exposing myself to across the board. And um, one thing led to another and I discovered Beauty Counter, which is a um, company that emphasizes safe beauty products, so skincare and makeup. And there's more information about Beauty Counter and the products that they have on Fit Devo, just right on that homepage as well. So um, that's been a fun additional thing that I've done that's also kind of in that health sphere, helps me keep my inflammation low. So thank you for bringing that up. I forgot about that. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Well, I think it is a nice fit and it's a nice holistic um, piece to our, our whole health journey or health. Um, it's just in general. So Stephanie, yeah. thank you so much for your time. I really You're appreciate welcome. it. I am really looking forward to, to digging into some of these and I want to go try that Asian salad that you were talking about. I mean, gosh, the, just having all that stuff chopped up and in a bowl and just ready to put some dressing on sounds lovely and divine and simple. You'll have to tell, tag me, tag me in Instagram if you try it. <laughs> I will, I will. I Like you, I have not been very good about doing stuff on Instagram lately. It's just, I don't know why. I just have, you know, we go in seasons, I guess. But uh, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And My pleasure. I, I look forward to seeing whenever you start posting things back up. I will be there cheering you on and watching your stuff and doing probably trying it as well. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. Isn't Stephanie great? I just love her simple approach to this. You know, I'm all about simplicity. Remember, I will have all of her contact information in the show notes. So make sure you go check out the link that has how she makes a bowl and how she makes smoothies, because it is, it really does break it down and makes it very doable and not very intimidating. I have to tell you, I got off and I've been really inspired to start making a, few, a little more bowls over um, for lunch in particular. And so I have been having a lot of fun adding th some things in. I found a really fantastic, it's, it's, it says it's Japanese salad dressing that, you know, when she talked about the Asian one, I was looking for something I didn't have to make and I don't have a Trader Joe's nearby and I'm too lazy to go to the one that's 30 minutes away from my house. And so I went, I found this, Jap, it's, it says it's Japanese at my grocery store and it is delicious. So that is something I will take a picture and put it over there on the newly created Graced Health Facebook page. I'm sorry. Graced Health Podcast Facebook group. I'm going to have to learn to keep all of these separated. So the group is designed to delve in a little bit more. I have what I'm calling goofs and grace. So the Wednesday morning at eight o'clock following the Tuesday posting of these episodes, I go in there and dig in a little bit more, share something. Sometimes I do these things. And I'm like, Oh, I wish I would have said this, or I want to clarify that, or I want to add to this. And so that's an opportunity for me to do that. And then it's also a place for you to share the things that you love. Do you make bowls? Do you meal prep like Stephanie does? I want to see it because I need I need inspiration too. And this goes, this goes both ways for sure. So make sure that you join me over at the Graced Health podcast group. I will include that in the show notes below. Hey, thanks for rating and reviewed. You know, that always makes so much of a difference. And I really appreciate the time that you take in doing it. Make sure you tune in next week where I'm going to be talking about ways to get fiber in without eating your weight in vegetables, because there are lots of other sources of fiber where you can get, um, you can get it without just having bowls and bowls of spinach. 
<laughs> so, all right, that is all for today. Go out there and have a grace day. <laughs>